Good evening. Or good morning. Good noon. Or good midnight. Whenever and wherever you're watching this. Welcome to the Sunday poem. Today, it's a poem by the master of the macabre, the tyrant of terror, the duke of dread. And I think, I think these are enough asinine alliterations. I'm talking, of course, about Edgar Allan Poe, who, as I mentioned in last week's Sunday poem, was not only a poet and a novel writer, but also an editor and literature critic for various magazines and newspapers. Even though Poe is most well known for his dark poetry, above all, of course, The Raven, for his gothic novels and stories such as The Fall of the House of Usher, The Telltale Heart, The Cask of Amontillado, Poe also wrote within other genres. With his stories, The Murders in the Rue Morgue, and later The Mystery of Marie Roger with their protagonist, the amateur detective Auguste Dupin, Poe is widely known as the originator of the classic detective story, which paved the way for Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes and also Agatha Christie's Miss Marple. In many of Poe's poems and stories, we can also sense a feeling that he was a hopeless romantic, with an emphasis on the word hopeless, a melancholic person who probably, but this is sheer speculation on my side, lived rather in his own mind than in the real world. But there was still another side to Edgar Allan Poe, a side that is probably not too well known to the general public. Poe was also an extraordinary humorist who wrote numerous satires, humor tales, and hoaxes. The Angel of the Art comes to mind, the spectacles, some words with a mummy, just, just to name a few. Today's poem is one of Edgar Allan Poe's rather humorous ones, yet not without a slight melancholic undertone. And and at least that is how I see it, double play on words. Let me know what you think, whether you also think that this is a double play on words. Let me know down in the comments. Here is The Divine Right of Kings by Edgar Allan Poe. The only king by right divine is Ellen King, and were she mine I'd strive for liberty no more, but hug the glorious chains I wore. Her bosom is an ivory throne where tyrant virtue reigns alone, no subject vice dare interfere to check the power. That governs here. Oh, would she deign to rule my fate? I'd worship kings and kingly state and hold this maxim all life long. The king, my king, can do no wrong. <laughs> <laughs> 